Why did you become a professor at BI? I never had a target of becoming a professor. I uh, spent more, most of my life as an action researcher in a applied research uh, organization called Sintef, uh, Scandinavia's largest applied research institute. And I was quite happy there for many years. It's, I could uh, sort of cultivate both practical and academic interests. And I got fed up after a while, for many years. I've, I've done a lot of things. I've been uh, living in the US and, and in Norway and uh, uh, working with quite a few organizations. And, um, but I decided that I wanted to try something new and to teach. How would you mm. say your time in research shaped you and how do you try to incorporate it in class? Uh, I think I'm shaped by having a lot of uh, practical projects with uh, companies as an action researcher. And so uh, I think I worked with, um, closely with uh, 50 companies mm -hmm. from a uh, great many industries. And uh, I'm trying to convey some of the insights uh, from that work in my teaching. I also think that that has given me a taste for certain kinds of theories over others. So um, I'm fond of what is called practice-based theories that tries to get into uh, what people do at work and how that shapes culture and identities. And I'm also uh, um, uh, very fond of a theoretical uh, school of work called Positive Organizational Scholarship. I was half a year at the University of Michigan, the Center for Positive Organizations. And uh, I tried to incorporate uh, a lot of uh, material from that direction into my teaching. I think uh, I tried to um, work visually with students. So, so I've seen that uh, in the companies I've been with, uh, so I've, I've been arranging and facilitating quite a few workshops in different kinds of organizations. And, and those workshops work best if we are quite uh, clear and uh, transparent and concrete on about our ideas. And that goes through the visual, the visual artifacts and, and overviews. And so working, uh, moving your body and, and drawing things on the wall and, and on flip overs and looking at things together. What are your main takeaways from your time uh, in Michigan and California? Hmm. I think California was my first taste of uh, a whole way of looking at learning that's now called design thinking. Okay. So I heard, I remember sitting in, in uh, um, during lunch, lunch time and, and discussions at uh, SRI Consulting, where I had my first visit, um, listening to people uh, saying that, discussing prototypes and saying that you really have to prototype for experience. And I, this was a long time ago, 98, 1998, and, and I didn't know what do you understand prototype by experience, and, and you thought, well, it's. Uh, Getting your hands dirty with making a draft or a first edition of something in such a way that it elicits the experience of the people that you're, you're going to work with. So it communicates with their experience so they can kind of look at it together and contribute with you. So, uh, and the whole ethos of learning by doing and uh, iterative learning and, and making small steps and making small intelligent errors and the love of ideas. I think that's uh, some of the things I took from California. And then I was at, uh, uh, is, can I say a bit more? Yeah. <laughs> I was at the Stanford School of Education uh, for m doing the coursework of my PhD. And that was such an incredibly uh, inspirational learning environment. And they, uh, they used fiction. Uh, so one of my favorite teachers was an anthropologist and he uses uh, plays and uh, fiction. So we read Toni Morrison and the bluest eye, for example, for a class, and had wonderful discussions on that. So, and, and very broad intellectual interests in uh, Stanford School of Education. So I got my first uh, taste of Mikhail Bakhtin and his philosophy. Uh, I got deeper into pragmatism. I got to read Plato. Uh, but all of it is kind of a practical uh, uh, sort of uh, 
way of approaching it and a way of approaching it that you should not be afraid to go to base literature yourself and make it your own and uh, you shouldn't uh, rely on the translation of others you should go and read Hegel yourself and bring it into your work if, if it speaks to you so I think these broad intellectual tastes have followed me and also the the kind of the inspiration to use fiction and movies and plays in teaching. There's a, you know, there's a lot of uh, wisdom that you can find in literature and movies that you can use in the classroom. And there are many situations and sort of human experience that are told about in a various sort of enlightening ways that you can uh, start uh, discussing a topic from. What other classes do you teach at BI besides the leadership and change manager? I think I teach change management that you've okay. been to. I teach a course called Managing for Excellence, where I use a lot of the inspiration from positive organizational scholarship. I teach a course at BI Fudan called ID Work in Organizational Creativity. Um, and then I have uh, a master management course for executives, also called uh, Managing for Excellence. So there are some of the same topics that we have in the Master of Science class. Why did you bec uh, become the Associate Dean for the Leadership and Change major? The Leadership and Organizational Behavior Institute. It's the most productive institute at BI, both in terms of, of, of publications and in terms of uh, teaching. So many of the more popular uh, master management programs come from here. And I saw that the previous major that we had in HRM was too narrow. It didn't really uh, connect the business side and leadership with uh, change side. So I think this it was a unique opportunity to draw broader from uh, the full range of capabilities and the theoretical research going on at the institute. What is your impact on students? What do you hope for? <laughs> You'd have to ask them, you know. <laughs> so, but when you... What I hope for? Yeah. I hope, that, I hope to make them able to lear learn how to learn. So maneuver for themselves in the world of theory. Set them on some pathways and show them examples of things that they can uh, use in practice also afterwards. But also let some of them have a... Let them all have a taste of really rich theoretical uh, research that uh, they can make use of while they're studying and immediately afterwards, but they can also see that, okay, I can come back and revisit the field five years ago, five years from now, because then it ha will have moved. So if I can see the thirst of knowledge, that's one thing. I also hope that uh, this whole major will enable them to be uh, change agents in the organizations when they graduate. And with change agents, I don't, I don't necessarily mean being top manager or even middle managers. I, I mean from the positions that they have as specialists or analysts or leaders of, of projects, uh, that they say, see that they have the opportunity and the possibility to lead from below and to engage others in leading from below and that they have tools and ways of thinking about that that helps them in that. Where is your biggest strength and where is your biggest weakness? Where is my biggest strength? I think I'm thirsty and hungry okay. to improve in terms of uh, both uh, learning about topics that I can bring into the major and also in learning about ways of teaching that engages better. And also um, learning about ways to design the majors so that we can make a difference, both in the lives of students and, and help the students make a difference in the lives of others. The, so that's a strength, that I have this hunger and thirst. Uh, weakness? Uh, you want a long list? Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's always that we manage, you know, there's a, many things going on. So sometimes we take on too much of a load. Uh, so that it's, it's short uh, term uh, time in developing for classes. I have a great number of students that I 
I'm currently supervising, so I'm not very good at saying no and perhaps prioritizing. Mm -hmm.